Okay, so having done that experiment earlier in how to make a supercapacitor, maybe think about where we actually were with those things. And what I tend to do is compare it to current commercial capacitors. And I've done this a number of times where I pull one to pieces so you can have a look inside and see what there is in there. Now, the current commercial capacitor I tend to use is 2.7 volts at half a farad, and that's the one you can buy on eBay for a few pence. Now, at 2.7 volts and half a farad, what that means is you get 1.32 coulombs. Now, ours was 4 farads at 1 volt, so that's 4 coulombs. So we're storing that much more energy. Of course, uh, power delivered on a supercapacitor is half CV squared, so the joules on a, a supercapacitor is different. So on the current commercial su supercapacitor, given that voltage and that capacitance, you get 1.82, uh, yeah, 1.823 joules is what you're actually storing on there, and that's the energy, that's the power. Uh, on ours, at 1 volt and 4 farads, we get 2 joules stored on there. So even though ours is only 1 layer instead of 12 layers, we're still storing more power on there than they are on the current commercial supercapacitors, despite the fact that it's been run at 1 volt instead of being run at 2.7 volts. Of course, we can play with the electrolyte to get that voltage up if we want, but we're really quite happy with it at the moment. And here it is that I've pulled it to pieces, and we can see the active material on the current collector. And the big question really is, how much active material is there on there? Now, there are lots of ways of measuring the um, amount of energy, power, storage on a uh, EASD. One way is to measure the whole unit and to work it out in comparison to the whole unit. That is the case, the sport electronics, the electrolyte, the active materials, and so on and so on and so on. And that all obviously brings it right down. And another way is just to weigh the active materials. Now, my assumption is that these graphoil leads here are making no contribution. And I think that's a fair enough assumption. When I wipe these off, you'll see that nothing's happened to them. And I've been running these for um, thousands of cycles. Remember, I build lots of these things. So I can make it look very, very easy because I, I don't know how many thousands of these things I've built. The whole point of this is for you to experiment. Don't expect the same results immediately. You're going to have to do a fair bit of work before you get those results, but you will get some result. As I say, I've been making lots of these. So let's have a look. We've got our two devices here and let's pop them on the micro scale and see what they actually weigh. And they weigh... 0.42 grams. Actually, 0.422 grams. Now, if I wipe that material off, we can get the weight of the um, current collectors and take one from the other. That'll give us the weight of the active material. Incidentally, if you have a look, you can see how shiny they are. Zero point four one five. 414, let's say it's 414. So take one from the other and we get 0 0.008 grams. So eight thousandths of a gram is what the active material actually was. Okay, so I've just done a quick calculation of what that actually means, and it means that the active material is at 500 farads per gram. Now, um, I did that together with you in a quick demonstration where I just slapped it together, but I can tell you that I compressed that in a different version, and I'm getting actually 9 farads per gram. Now, if I get 9 farads per gram, then uh, we're just hitting this thing out of the ballpark. But let's take our 4 farads per gram, because you've seen that on the video. What that actually means is that if I make a supercapacitor, which I can do quite easily, and the reason I can do it quite easily is this liquid method, because we're aiming at printing it, remember. Using that dip coat and making it into a printable ink is a tiny step. It's just a matter of drying it a little bit so we get a thicker material that we can print. But if I do that and I make a um, supercapacitor that size, this is a ring of paper, 500 sheets, and you can see how big it is, that will be a 2,000 amp hour battery. That's what that would look like. Now, you think about lead acid if you want 2,000 amp hours out of it. You basically have to fill the room. Then you've got all the associated problems. Now, I've been running this thing for months now. I've done thousands of cycles with it. After about 10,000 cycles, it does lose power a little bit. It retains 97.4% of its original power after 10,000 cycles. 10,000 cycles is a long time. And I don't know how long it will actually last. I can only tell you that I've run it to 10,000 cycles. So that's what a 2,000 amp hour battery will look like. And that's how long it will last. Anyway, I thought that little bit of follow-up would be interesting for you. And thank you for watching.